today's video, we discuss external satellite receivers. So let's get started. We have the two latest satellite receivers offered by Spectrum on the test bench today, SPM4651T and SPM9747. SPM4651T has two external antennas where the 9747 doesn't. So this allows you to space them out in a 90 degree orientation and also has telemetry function. So if you use it on a helicopter, for example, that has a flight controller, but no telemetry, you can add this and this will give you telemetry capability. 9747, a little bit easier on installation because it works just like the AR620 and the AR630. You don't have external antennas, so you just wanna put this in a location where it's not blocked by a fuel tank, flight battery, or carbon fiber pieces in the airframe. The 9747 is a little bit less than the 461T, so if you like that option, you will save a little bit of money as well. Also on the test bench, I have two different receivers, the AR10360T, which has two SRXL2 ports, so you can add two satellite receivers, and the AR8020T only has one SRXL2 port, so you can only add one satellite receiver. I'm gonna go ahead and bind up the satellite receiver to the AR10360T, and then we'll look at the flight log so you can see how these correspond with the ports on the receiver and also how to understand what the information shows on that screen. When binding up the satellite receivers, you will notice that they actually have a bind button. You wanna push those down to bind the satellite to the receiver. They also do that so in case this is more hidden with the main receiver, you have another place that you can start the bind process. You don't have to take the receiver out. So a really great idea that they put that on the satellite receiver. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this into the top right port, which is our LSRXL2 port. And in a moment, that'll make more sense once we look at the flight log. So we're gonna put that there. We're gonna power up the system. I'm gonna hold the bind button and you will notice that it starts to flash. And also our main receiver starts to flash. Go to bind, click yes. When everything's bound up, you will notice that the satellite receiver and the main receiver both have a solid light. Let's take a look at the flight log screen so you understand how the main receiver and satellite receiver correspond with the values. A is always the phase for the main receiver, whether you're using a multi-port or a single port. L has a value because, as I briefly mentioned, we hooked the satellite port into the L SRXL2. If we plugged it into B, it would show up here. And if we were using both, it would show up B and L. And then so you can put those on different positions in the plane. And depending on the value, you know which one that you want to adjust for optimal connectivity. If you're running a single port, again, A is always the main and B is your satellite, so it's always going to default to B for the satellite on a single port receiver. Some also have additional R's that you can hook up as well, and that would correspond with the letter R. These will be your fades, F is your frame loss, and H is your holds. I'm going to put the info directly from Spectrum down in the description so that you understand the difference of what those values mean and when you need to adjust your antennas or relocate your receivers that don't have antennas. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new today, go ahead and push the like button. If you wanna see future videos, subscribe to the channel while you're here. I appreciate y'all watching and we'll see you on the next one.